Hello everyone, and welcome back to The Little Blue Fly. If this is your first time visiting, welcome, and I invite you to subscribe to my channel. Also, make sure to tap that bell and select all to receive all of my future postings. So in today's video, I am going to share with you all how to strip paint from a natural stone fireplace. So right now, I know a lot of people are out there doing whitewashing on their fireplaces. And as you can see, the previous owners, that's what they did here. I myself want to strip things back and take this. I know it's going to be, be a beautiful uh, stonework. I want to take it back to its natural glory. So with a lot of arm power, and I mean a lot, this, this project took quite a bit of time because I only used chemical to remove the, pro the paint from the stone. There is zero sandblasting being used in this project, which made it very cost effective, but it took a lot of arm power to get this off. So that being said, let's begin, shall we? So I did a little test on top of my mantle. I used grease lightning on one side and citrus strip on the other. I wanted to see which one would work the best because as you can see, there is whitewash everywhere. So I put the grease lightning here and then the citrus strip gel. And as you can see, citrus strip works. So, well, actually they both do. So I decided I'm gonna do the gel first, let it sit and do some scrubbing. I used a purdy brush and I thought I was gonna use that one bristle brush, but I ended up getting some brass um, scrub brushes because it really, really helped. Um, it, it saved, it saved on the arm power. <laughs> so as you can see here, I already placed on the citrus strip gel on half of it. Look, you can see my Christmas tree over to the side because I, I just immediately wanted to get into this project. I was not going to put another decor piece on this mantle until it was stripped back to its natural glory. So I wanted to do half first so I could compare. As you can see here, the paint is already starting to lift. Now some people place plastic over their citrus strip. I did not see that to be necessary because this is a very porous stone and the grout as well. And I just knew regardless, I was really gonna have to work the paint out from out of these pores. So I just let it sit until actually it dried and then I worked with it. So up above this part has been scrubbed and the bottom half still has the gel on it. Just a, a huge job, huge. So as you can see, I'm wearing my very dirty gloves, so important. And I'm just gonna take some of the grease lightning and I'm gonna spray it on and working with these two chemicals together perfectly fine some chemicals you just do not want to mix them but these two are just fine but make sure that you are wearing a respirator because you are because we are inside and there are quite a bit of vapors
I have my metal brush here. And what I'm going to do is just go back and forth, left, right, up, down, and just really work into the pores of this stone. And I did this with every single stone on the fireplace. Put on the gel, then put on the grease lightning. I'm scrubbing it now with the metal brush. And then as you'll see later, I'm also going to be using steel wool. Now I just didn't do this one time on each brick. You can see it's really, the gel's really picking up. Well, I'm sorry, each stone, not brick, I apologize. I had to go over each stone three to five times. So this was very, very, very time consuming and exhausting. And then I have my, my little bucket here, my movie theater popcorn bucket that I'm using um, when I rinse off the stone. I just use uh, very hot, soapy water. I'll be showing you more in detail as well as we go through the video. So again, you just, it doesn't matter which direction you go, just make sure you're scrubbing, you're scrubbing on that stone really well. And get into the grout pieces. And here's the steel wool. Went through quite a few bags on this fireplace, probably about three of them actually. Because I, I felt that, you know, maybe from cleaning, you know, throughout the years, I felt that, you know, getting a good lather on top of this would really help things out. And, you know, it did. So the wire brush first then the steel wool and then this little plastic bris bristle brush that just really helps lather things up well it also makes it easier to remove all this residue off when you have more of a like a sudsy surface and it helps you to see when most of it has come on his <laughs> sad face. It is because my arm hurts. But anyways, it helps you um, to see when you have taken off the majority of it because your your foam, your soapy foam is white. It doesn't have the tint of the the white and the gray and sometimes brown. So that is just me going through it one time. Then I'm gonna spray back with the grease lightning. I do not apply the citrus strip gel again. That is only once. I will just reapply the grease lightning and just continue doing the process until I can get off most of the white paint. I'm not going to be able to get it all off, but we were really close to getting all of it off because we worked so hard on this stone. Again, stone is very porous and I did not want to use a sandblaster because you know, this is an 81 year old stone cottage. It, it, it really would have damaged the stone and the grout and it would have became very costly to fix things up. And I didn't want any more work. And as you can see, see it's still brown. It's, you know, still has all the white and the gray, which tells us that we're still lifting off paint. So again, three to five times each stone and you don't just sit there and just you know lightly put the brush you really 
have to use your arm power. And it's starting to look better. And then at the end, with the large brush, just lather it up really good with the hot soapy water. And as you can see, underneath that white paint, we have gorgeous stone. This was the exciting part, seeing what color the stone was going to be. And I still have to work around the edges quite a bit. So look at this. Looks pretty great, right? I am absolutely pleased. Now I see just a little bit of, of paint in there and there is one more chemical that I will be sharing with you here soon. I didn't get it on video, but um, it was to help remove, it actually had an acetone in it. See, look at the color of the stone. Oh, that's gonna be a pretty one. It And it helps remove the latex paint out. And that was the last chemical that I used. So here we have the left side done and the right side that has not been touched yet. That's the sad part. Because just to do the left hand side was so much work. So many different textures and colors and this one's beautiful right here. Very nice piece. And I'm just gonna work on this side a little bit. Again, with the brush and the steel wool. It's just a process. You just have to keep going. So I'm gonna show you how I applied the citrus strip. This is a very thick and goopy type of substance. And it, it smells like oranges, but it is also strong. So make sure your windows are open. You want that good ventilation. So as you can see, I applied some up at top and we still have the bottom to go. Look at that mess. Oh, such a mess. And when you apply this gel, um, don't do it sparingly. I mean, really get it on your brush and just, uh, you know, just apply it heavily. And just make sure that you work it into each and all the little pores. And you'll see it because it'll look dry, you know, if you have missed a spot. And make sure you cover every bit of it. Now we're going to work with this stone enhancer. So what I want to say first is the last product I used on this stone was called um, Crud Cutter. And that was to get the remainder of the paint out of the pores and it did a great job. Now on the left hand side, I have this stone enhancer. The right hand side does not have it on yet. Okay, so we're going to revisit this one last time. First, we apply the citrus strip gel, just one time at the beginning, and we scrub with the wire brushes and also the steel wool. Then we come in with the grease lightning. This will be used for the stone that we're gonna scrub additional three to five times. 
again with the brushes and the steel wool and then we'll clean it off with hot soapy water and then we come in with the crud cutter and this brush here to remove the rest of the paint out from the pores of the grout and the stone and finally the stone enhancer and it will darken and highlight all of our stone if you use these products you will save tons of money and not have the mess or the fuss of a sandblaster and here it is all completed what a beauty I actually applied two yeah two different times um, two different applications of the stone enhancer by aqua mix and it just really darkened up the stone and highlighted it and it's also it protects uh, against stains it leaves no sheen and you are just left with your gorgeous natural stone now question why would somebody paint over this i just I, I don't understand this is absolutely beautiful so much character it's not like it's just one smooth piece of stone it's it's uh, it's just gorgeous solid stone through and through I'm really going to enjoy decorating this now right after Christmas I was getting ready to put up another display and I just could not see myself putting one more thing on top of that whitewash I just I could not it's kind of darker on this side it's completely cloudy outside I didn't I apologize I didn't have a light over on this side and you can go back as much as you want to with the stone enhancer I just can't touch the stone enough it it this was such a rewarding project there was times I really just wanted to cry and just give up because I just sometimes I worked myself sick because my muscles were just hurting but I just kept telling myself it's gonna be worth it so this is how you achieve getting paint off of a stone fireplace without sand blasting and you save tons of money by just using the chemicals and staying away from the sandblaster simply stunning